Hey everyone, Josh Davis here for a quick uh, Lightroom tutorial for you. Uh, today I'm going to show you how I uh, touched, retouched this image that I recently posted to my blog on February 17th. Uh, check it out at bustedshutter.com. Uh, but the uh, the picture or the post was entitled "Early Bird," and it was just this uh, sunrise picture that I took on the ocean. And um, how I took it was on a tripod with my Nikon D700 and my Tamron 28 to 75 lens. It was at 28 millimeters, and to get the water all misty like that, I had to use a long exposure of 20 seconds, which means I had to use a really small aperture of f16 uh, to be able to get that that uh, that long uh, shutter speed of uh, 20 seconds and uh, this was the before picture I know it looks totally different but I'm going to show you how we got to uh, the after uh, the after state first things first is we need to straighten this picture so I go to the crop tool click the angle button and then just draw a line by clicking and holding across the horizon or the part that I want to be straight. Release the mouse button, hit enter, and our picture is cropped. It's, uh, it's that easy. Uh, next thing we want to do is remove any sensor dust. So when you're shooting at uh, <laughs> f16, uh, you know, uh, sensor dust tends to show up and you can see you know, two little spots right here in the water. We'll just use our healing tool to click once over them to remove them. Uh, I'm kind of a stickler about the little things like this because if you ever wanted to blow it up and make a larger print, it can really stick out. There's another one up here. And it is disappointing to have actually printed a picture and then actually see some of these dust spots. So it's best to just take, you know, the two seconds to go through it make sure they're all out of there and I think that's pretty much it. Hit close, we'll zoom out. Uh, the next thing I want to do is change the white balance. It, this is looks a little bit too blue for me. It's a sunrise so I want to depict things just to be a little bit warmer so I'll drag the temperature slider pretty high. Let's keep it around around here. And since we uh, we used a long exposure to get the water like this, it kind of blew out the sky a little bit. So it looks really light and white right now, and it wasn't really like that when I was there. It was definitely a lot darker because it was uh, 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll use the gradient tool, lower the exposure a solid amount, I would say even almost close to two, two stops here. Hold down shift to get a straight line. Just drag it right down. Once we've done that, we can move it. Just adjust it there. Actually, maybe I'll bring it down just a little bit more. And I'll even bring the clarity up just a little bit up here. Sort of bring some definition back into the clouds. And I'll boost the saturation up a little bit too really bring out the colors. So that is it there. And now to bring some light back into the rocks here because they're looking a little bit dark. I really bump the fill light up. Just kind of give almost uh, kind of a 3D effect. Three, you know, just gives the photo a little bit more dimension. Bring up the fill light and then kick the blacks up just a little bit. Sort of increase that contrast. And then down on the clarity slider, we can really kick this up a notch on a landscape picture, maybe even above 50. Really bring some more snap into the rocks and into the photo here. Same thing with vibrance, we can bring that up fairly high to really saturate the colors, bring in you know, that sky up there. Down on our tone curve, we want to increase the lights just a hair, maybe to about say 11 or 12. And what that will do is just punch up the light part of the photo, kind of make it look like that the uh, the sun and the light is, is coming in kind of out of the clouds here and really hitting 
the water and the rocks and it kind of trails off into this dark area of the photo. Under my saturation, I might bring up the yellows just a little bit, as well as the orange, the red. Kind of boost the colors in that sunset there. Sharpening. I'll zoom in to 100% so I can see the rocks. And just slowly start to drag the slider up here until it looks sharp. So that is pretty much it. I might even finish this off with a little bit of a lens vignette under the lens correction. There you go. Pretty, uh, pretty crazy what you can do with Lightroom. And I didn't even have to bring the picture into Photoshop. As you can see, a kind of a, a before and after here. And that's not really showing me the before picture at all. I guess that's not working. But anyway, you saw the picture before. Actually, I can, uh, let me duplicate this layer. This picture. And then we'll press reset. You can see uh, before and after. Pretty crazy. Lightroom is a pretty crazy tool and uh, it allows me to spend a lot less time in Photoshop um, I'm mostly doing, you know, going into Photoshop to maybe apply a little of a high pass uh, filter that uh, to this photo or you know any of my landscape pictures, and to retouch people. Um, I just find that Photoshop uh, does a much better job when I have to retouch portraits or uh, people. But other than that, I can do most of my work in Lightroom. So uh, if you don't have Lightroom, pick up a copy. It's a great tool. Um, if you do use it, hopefully this helps you. Uh, adjust some of your future landscape shots and kind of gives you some ideas on you know different creative uh, avenues you can pursue with this program. So uh, thanks for checking out the video and uh, I'll see you later.